know, not even gonna roll the intro, you know what I'm saying? What up, Giants fans and, and, and the channel watchers, subscribers, viewers, all that. Shout out to members. Not really gonna roll the intro because I might be doing two vids today. This one right here that you're listening to right now is gonna be kind of like my reaction and thoughts to day one of free agency. And then I uh, might have another one out on what I want slash expect to happen on day two of free agency. But... To recap day one real quick, it was kind of uneventful for the Giants right up until like 12.30, 1 o'clock in the morning when uh, Dalvin Thompson went and signed with the Minnesota Vikings. But in general, the Giants were very quiet on day one, as were most of the teams in the NFL. You know what I'm saying? Most of the teams in the NFL didn't really make any moves. And the NFC East as well as a whole was just extremely quiet. Um, the, the really, there's one team that stands out to me that like made... A bunch of moves and even up until right before I click record here are still making moves as the Patriots guess why it's because they have the third most cap space in the league it, it makes sense that they're gonna be making a lot of moves but the Giants for the most part we signed Devontae Booker former Bronco and Raiders running back to a two-year six million dollar contract it's technically a one-year two and a half million dollar contract with the way it's broken down we could cut him literally after this one year and he's getting uh, he's either getting two and a half or 2.75 this year but I'm looking at it as a one-year contract. I really am. Other than that, we re-signed a really good depth player in Austin Johnson. I think also to like a $3 million contract. Austin Johnson, uh, for those of you that remember, he, we got him from the Titans last year. I think during the season. And he played pretty well for the Giants. But once again, he is a depth piece on the defensive line. I got no problem with that. As I have no problem with the Devontae Booker um, signing. And I'm going to get into that a little bit. What I do have a problem with, of course, is that we let Dalvin Thomason walk. And I'm, I made the whole We Need to Talk episode on it. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. But that episode, I think, really expresses how important DT was to this team. But also kind of a bigger picture thing that the Giants have been failing to do for really the, the entire decade and that is keeping the homegrown talent you have the, the talent that you draft in the second and mid rounds and you does you develop to become some of the best players at their position in the league the Giants just can't seem to keep we used to be able to do it some of our best players of all time were second round picks Amari Toomer second round pick Tiki Barber second round pick Michael Strahan probably the most famous one second round pick we used to be able to keep these guys. They used to be integral part of our teams. They used to be stars here in New York. Stay there for their entire careers for the most part. And then you got this this decade rolls its head around. All of a sudden, you got Linval Joseph. Great defensive tackle for us. We could not keep him. Second round pick as well. Landon Collins. Great safety when he was with us. We're talking about one of the best safeties in the league. Now, of course, he did go and get overpaid by Washington, but we let him walk without getting anything, anything in return, right? Second round pick. And then Dalvin Thompson. And Dalvin Thompson is literally Linval Joseph all over again. Like, word for word, bar for bar, he's literally Linval Joseph all over again. Dalvin Thompson, second round defensive tackle, developed into one of the best run stuffers in the league and one of the more underrated defensive tackles in the league. Um, He does a lot of the dirty work in the trenches for us, allows guys like Blake Martinez to have an easier time, and of course, Leonard Williams to have an easier time to do their job. We just, just let him walk to the Vikings as well, which is why I'm like, it's Linval Joseph all over again, because in 2015, Linval walked to the Vikings. The, the Giants just can't seem to keep the talent that they draft and develop. And I don't know what it is. If, if there is a move that I would say was terrible by us on day one, and once again, it's just day one, there's still a lot of free agents left. There's still a good amount of time and free agency left in general. But the move that was a failure in day one was the fact that we didn't make a move to keep Dalvin Tomlinson. And... <sighs> Like, you got to think, at one point during the season, if I remember correctly, the Packers were actually interested in trading for Dalvin Thomason. And I know this is 2020 is hindsight. I, I'll admit it right now. But the Packers were interested in trading for Dalvin Thomason. We should have done it then and at least gotten something back. Because we're not going to get a comp pick for him if we go out here and sign Kenny Galladay, which I'm going to touch on more in, in the other video. But the only way we're getting a comp pick for Dalvin is if we literally don't sign any big 
free agent. I'm not sure how the NFL defines it, but you know, like when one of those players like a Gale or a Reddick, if we sign those guys, we're not getting that comp pick. So ultimately trading Dalvin Thompson back during the season, once again, 2020 is hindsight, right? Because maybe the Giants said to themselves, no, we know what we got here. We know we could continue to develop this defense. And well, they did that, right? And, and we had that second half turnaround a little bit. Went from one to seven, finished six and 10. But if they traded Dalvin Thompson, we would have gotten to see how good Leonard Williams is without him. We would have gotten to try and figure out if we do really need to sign or draft another defensive tackle or, or if the guys on board are good enough. That being Dexter Lawrence, BJ Hill, RJ McIntosh, and Leo at that time. But, but speaking of which, I will say this, replacing Dalvin Thompson is gonna be relatively easy like i feel like saying easy is the incorrect term but it's not going to be hard right you slide dexter over to nose tackle you move up bj hill and that other side is going to be like a rotation of hill johnson mcintosh and whatnot and i think that'll be that'll be fine it obviously won't be as good as great as lawrence um tomlinson and williams were together but it's gonna be good and of course now unless we sign another d tackle in free agency here i do think it's a legitimate um it, it's a legitimate thing that we might draft one you know what i mean people are talking aline mcneil and whatnot in the second round i would not be surprised but yeah that was really the worst thing to happen day one we just really couldn't do anything with Dalvin, and he signed for a pretty good contract as well 11 million a year two years with minnesota and he said he was willing to take a, a, a hometown this town that means this guy could have probably signed for nine and a half million a year with us I find that crazy but but to get back to the other ones in Devontae Booker and Austin Johnson well like I said I already like Austin Johnson I don't really get people that are angry at the signing um it's just keeping good depth we do need depth pieces here Devontae Booker the main thing I've seen is that people said we overpaid him and I kind of get it in a way because I've been saying all offseason that you know we could get a running back in undrafted free agency and I still believe that but from what I've seen from Devontae Booker and, and it's not much because I've only had like a night to look up on him I like what I've seen though, he could run on the outside and the inside, he definitely could run through the tackles on the middle, he's kind of a little bit of a do it all back, he seems he seems like he's going to be a better backup running back, or at the very least just as good, because at least he's been a bit more consistent than Wayne Goldman throughout his career, you go and you look at the stats and you look at his time with the Broncos and Raiders, at the very least, I think we got a Wayne Goldman level type of player back here without having to pay Wayne what he's probably going to be asking for which is more than three million dollars a year and once again like i said i'm looking at it as a one year two and a half mil deal that we could cut after we're done with them this year we'll see how it goes what this says to me is that and we got to remember the coaching staffs they do have a say in free agency now so that means they had a say in probably not making a move for Dalvin thompson they had a say in making a move to get aj back and to get booker on the squad what this says to me is that we're probably going to have a little bit of a one-two punch in the running game here with Booker and Saquon. Now Saquon is obviously still going to be the feature back, but in order to allow him to have, you know, a certain amount of like snaps per game and then, you know, it's split between receiving and running, I think Booker is going to come in there and spell him a couple of times and I think he's one of the one of the perfect bills at running back to come in here and spell Saquon. So that's how I feel about it. Let me know what you guys think. Put your thoughts down below. Like I said, there's a lot of free agency left. That's it for now. I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.